Ma scusi. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. Tarubah, thank you, O great king, for all that you have done for me, for all that you have done for us. Tarubah, for your loving kindness. And Tarubah, for your faithfulness. Tarubah, for your mighty power. And I have asked that you may please forgive me of my sins, my transgressions, and my iniquity. Forgive me for all my mistakes. Forgive me for my foolishness. And I have asked that you may please forgive us as a whole for our sins, our transgressions, and our iniquity, and all of our mistakes and all of our foolishness. And I have asked that we all may receive a great portion of your mercy. And I ask that you may lead us on the path of righteousness for your name's sake. I have asked that we, we have the strength to continue on this journey, this journey as we strive to obtain everlasting life. And I've asked that we would not be led astray by false doctrine. And I ask that we would not be led astray by the words of any man or any woman. And I ask that we not be led astray by the evil desires that may be within our heart. But I've asked that we may be led by your Ruach, by your spirit. And I ask that we would never be led astray. And I've asked that we would not be ashamed to express our love to you. I ask that we not be ashamed of wearing our garments or our fringes. And I ask that we not be ashamed of keeping your appointed times. And I ask that we not be ashamed to spread your word. I ask that we would not be ashamed to stand on the truth. And I ask that you may teach each and every one of us to be strong, to be courageous. And I ask that we not be afraid of the face of any individual. But I ask that when we have to speak a word, that you may put the right words in our mouth. And I ask that we would never be overcome with fear. And I've asked you to go into this discussion, this lesson. I've asked that you may open up our hearts and cause us to understand. I ask that you may give strength to the speaker so that he may edify. And I ask that you may please allow us to be edified. And I've asked that you may please allow us to continue to strive in this life if be in your will. For it's your will that shall be done. And I ask that in due season that we all may reach a state of maturity, I ask that we all may be perfect in due season. And I ask that we may all be presented unto you without spot, without blemish. Let your mercy be upon each and every one of us, even myself. I ask that this prayer is acceptable unto you, O great King, and I ask that none of my words and none of my actions will cause my prayers to be hindered. Amen, amen, so be it. Hallelujah. Turn the floor to you, Kohan. Hallelujah. First, giving honor and praise unto the most magnificent Yah Yahuwah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, for blessing us to have some form of understanding of his ways, his statutes, his commandments. I'm so ever, ever so thankful to have the breath of life that. I can express that and share with you the gratitude that I have of our supreme intellect, the creator of heaven and earth. I want to just express again my love for each and every one of you that are on the call for allowing me the opportunity to share with you. Uh, um, I was asked to come back again tonight and um, do the second part. Uh, and so I didn't have a second part at the time, but I realized and understood that there were things going on last week that were out of our control. And we know that there are things that will hinder us sometimes from receiving the message. So I just want to kind of do a, a, a backtrack and then move us forward. So my goal is to be done by nine and we can interject from that time, you know, up until we want to conclude. Uh, I said it last week that I didn't want to be long-winded, and of course the internet waves just did not want me to share. So I want to reiterate what was shared last week. Uh, last week when we spoke, we spoke about ways of loving the creator, 
the creator made it clear that if we were to express our love to him, there are certain things that we would do that would be found in the book of Devarim, erroneously called by the Greeks Deuteronomy. And so I want to express coming from that chapter, Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter and the fourth verse, where the creator commanded every man, every family to express Yah's greatness and how one would love the creator. It says that we would spend time teaching it to our children wherever we were, whether it was walking by the way, we were laying down, we was on the basketball court, we was playing football, basketball, whatever it was, we would be speaking about what's good and right and the pleasing the creator. We wouldn't be singing, just singing a song and dancing, but we would express to our children and to one another the greatness of the creator and what he does for us in our lives. And so as we, as we moved on in the journey, we spoke about how Yah said in Jeremiah, the 31st chapter and the 31st verse, that uh, there would be a significant amount of people that would be around on the planet and they would have it in their inward parts to want to serve Yah, that they wouldn't have to go to a place of worship, a place where we gather to find out this information, but it will be placed in our hearts. And that's exactly what it says in Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, where Yah says, and you would love Yah with all your heart, that you would learn to love his ways and to express that with the ones that you love and you care for as Yah cares and loves for us. And then at the end of that is what's the job and the focus of the sons of light? We are those sons and daughters of light that would express to the whole planet that Yah should be worshiped and served. And so I think that as we move through these scriptorial references, that it's important for us to connect all of the dots, scratch off all the T's, you know, just make sure that we're in a good space. And so I just wanted to reiterate with some words of wisdom. And that would be in the book of Ecclesiastes. I don't think you have access. So if you want to go to the book of Ecclesiastes and the 11th chapter, this is a very, very short book but I think that it ties in with what we talked about last week. And so, Aaron, if you can chime in and get on, on course, again, whatever uh, scripture that you can get your hands on, you know, just go to the book of Ecclesiastes, the 11th chapter, and we're going to take it from verse 1 until the 10th verse. And so... I don't have my brother Yemiahu on the call, so I'll just go ahead and, and uh, take care of the reading. Um, so again, in the book of Kohelet, the preacher, uh, we know that Solomon is this individual. He's sharing wisdom to us all. And as a man that has obtained a few years, I'm still a young man. I uh, consider myself a young man of 53 years, uh, but I know that it took some study. It took some counsel, you know, it took some meditation to get where I'm at. And I still haven't learned everything, but there are some things that I learned in this particular book. The words of wisdom that came from Kohilat or Solomon, uh, I think they're relevant to all of us. And so these are just some things that I've incorporated in my life. And I'm sure that there are men on this call that have done the same. Uh, but I wanted to share it with even the younger men as they're growing and they're getting into the different levels of manhood that it would be good for them. Because there are certain things that some of us on this call didn't learn until we became grown men. Uh, and so I think it would be even wiser that we could give and share this with the young men, you know, well, they're young and they can receive it and implement it into their lives a whole lot earlier. 
So it says, cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. What does that mean? That I put my bread in a jar and just send it across the waters and see what happens? Or does it have a deeper meaning? The deeper meaning that I get from it is that we would do some form of investing, try this and try that, and see what comes up out of what you put out there. So our very thoughts and what we are striving to do and to be, we would try the creator. We would try ourselves. We would trust ourselves and we would put forth some type of effort to make what we know and we see and the creativity that we have, we would put it out in the universe and see what comes of it. So when it says cast your bread upon many waters, in other words, put another energy out there, see what you want out of life and put it out in the universe and see what you get back. That tells me that the intelligence of man is so great and so powerful. We don't even really understand that we have a power within ourselves that we have to begin to learn and to trust. And so don't just put, as they, the elders would say, put all of your eggs in one basket, but try different things and see what you can get out of those different things. Use a creative mind to see what you have and what you can put forth and what you'll bring out of it. You know, some people plant strawberries and it'd be the worst crop of strawberries or be the best crop of strawberries. But either way, you would have never known unless you put the work in. You got to put the work in. You have to put the work in in order to see what you're going to get out of it. And that's when you begin to trust in the creator, the source that you can't see, but also you begin to trust and see that you put forth a good, righteous effort and now you're getting something beautiful and wonderful that's going to benefit you. The second verse, it says, divide a portion into seven, yea, even into eight, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. That ties into the first one. Split what you have, you work hard, you know, a lot of times we put a lot of effort into playing with the money that we earn instead of investing in our future. And we should invest always in our future because where you are in your teens, in your early 20s, in your early 30s, you're not going to be there if you're in your 50s. That's not the mindset that you're going to have. You don't know what you're going to encounter in this life. And so Solomon is teaching us to be able to put forth a righteous thought about, I want to try to see if this is going to come about. This is a thought that I have. I want to see if it's going to come into fruition. And I feel it's a righteous thought. And when you put your energy into making this righteous thought come to fruition, in other words, it comes to pass, Yah's going to support and help that, but you don't know which idea, which thought is going to blossom into something wonderful and beautiful. Verse three says, if the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. We know that. We know that there's things going on in this planet right now that the creator is allowing us to see. So we already know that certain clouds produce certain things. And we all know that all of that comes from the creator. He's the source of all of that coming to pass, a rain cloud, uh, just a cooling cloud. He knows all of those different clouds by their name and by their job that they're supposed to do. And then it says, and if a tree fall in the south or in the north, 
in the place where the tree falleth, there it shall be. That makes a whole lot of sense. Wherever it falls, that's what going to be. But then there was something I thought about thinking about this. The only one that knows that it fell, unless you're in the vicinity, the only one that knows where it is, is the creator. Because there's things that happen when we're asleep, when we're awake. There are things happening all, all over this planet that we don't have no idea about, but the creator knows where it is, how it fell, what happened to it, why it fell, who did it, the whole nine yards. And so that makes us think about the creative source that made us all. And that things that happen on the planet, we may not have knowledge of, but he does. We may not have knowledge of it, but he does. Verse four says, he that observeth the wind shall not sow. And he that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. So sowing, when they say sow, that means you're putting something in the ground. You're putting a seed into the ground to make something blossom. It's not just something that goes into the ground, but it could be even the seed of your thought. Unless you put in the work that's necessary and not be following and doing something else. Because it says if you're paying attention to the clouds, if you're paying attention to the, to the wind, you're going to forget to plant. And you're going to forget to reap. So there's a certain kind of work that we have to be always paying attention to. We got to know the signs, the seasons. We have to be paying attention to what Yah is doing on the planet and the planet itself. What Yah has given us, the blessing that Yah has given us of this planet. We pay attention more to what's happening to outer space and, you know, what's happening with, you know, other galaxies. But Yah gave us this space. He gave us the sun, the moon, and the stars. All of that helps to govern the space that we're in. You know that there are hundreds of thousands of galaxies out there that, you know, we have no idea about. So let's pay attention to what governs us on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's not worry about those things that we cannot control, the things that we can, the things that we should be paying attention to, what's going to sustain us on this planet. We have to be in succinct. We have to be in order, in alignment with the ways of the creator. Verse five, it says, as thou knowest not, what is the way of the wind? Because the wind, <laughs> we all know, you could be out there and they feel like it going North, east, south, and west, all at the same time. <clears throat> if you come from the, the Windy City, Chicago, or you call, come from the Big Apple, New York City, man, that thing be whipping so hard, you chasing something that you will never be able to find or nor understand. So it says, as thou knowest not what is the way of the wind, nor how the bones do grow, in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the work of Elohim who doeth all things. When you think about it, each one of us began as a seed, sperm. And this in this milky substance, there is a DNA. You'll be tall or you'll be short. You'll be slim or you'll be a little plump. You'll have brown, eye, brown, eye, brown eye, eyes or you'll have blue eyes. You'll have this tone of skin or that tone of skin. There's so many factors in to us becoming this physical being and even spiritual being that we don't even know. That's why he said you'll never be able to figure it out to create it. We think in our own minds that now I understand the creator, but we'll, we will never truly, fully understand y'all, Yahuwah. We're all growing and learning and trying to become 
more powerful beings that y'all would be pleased with. And by the time, by the time we think we figured out, we're gone. Yah is the finisher. Not a, none of us are the finisher. Ever. Yah is the finisher. He knows the beginning. He knows the end. They say the omega until the end. They know we know and understand and comprehend that there is a creative source out there that we just don't really, we don't clearly understand. All we have to do is be obedient to what has been left on record that's going to make us stronger, better, more yah like That's what we got to pay attention to. Verse 6 says, In the morning, sow thy seed. In other words, in the morning, plant your seed. Get up early to accomplish what you need to do. The later you get up in the day, the harder it gets to accomplish things. The earlier you get up, the more you get done, the more you can earn, and especially in this time. People want their stuff before 12 o'clock in some instances. I work in a courier business. And people want they stuff before 12 noon. If you can get it here faster, I'll pay for it. The later in the day, you know, you're going to have some hardships. And so the wisdom of Solomon is saying in the morning, sow your seed, plant what you want to get out of the day, put it out there early. And in the evening, withhold not thy hand. You got to still keep working. You can't have the wrong kind of mind. You have to have the right kind of mind that's going to say, guess what? I planted this. I remembered I planted this. I need to come back to this. It's not just a tomato or an apple or a potato. It's something other than that. What have we planted? Where are our roots? What are we thinking about? What are we trying to accomplish? And strive to accomplish something that Yah would be pleased with. So sow that seed. Put that seed in the earth. It says, for thou knowest not which will prosper. This, whether this or that, or whether they both be good alike. So we have to understand that because we have creative minds and our minds can think left or they can think right. They could think good or they can think bad. If we put more effort into positive thinking instead of negative thinking, we'll see that we'll have more options of uh, 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 getting and blossoming from something that's more powerful. Only thing that a negative mind will produce it's just more negative thoughts. So we have to continue to push, push ourselves to produce and reproduce more righteous thoughts. When Yah told Adam or Adam, he says, be fruitful and multiply. That just didn't mean that you would replenish or you would replicate just what you look like, but you would replicate righteous thought, righteous thinking, righteous actions. And those are the types of things that we have to think about in our own mind is reproducing, pushing ourselves even further to think in a way that would be productive. And if you can't do that yourself, then you would have to find someone that you could be aligned with. Somebody's going to say to you, yep, Shai Shamar, that's the kind of thought you need to do. You need to have. Oh, no, Saul, you need you don't need to have that kind of thought because that thought's not going to produce anything. So think about reproducing righteous thoughts. Verse seven says, and the light is sweet. And a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. I don't know about you all, but every day that I wake up, I'm so thankful to the most high that I I see the sun coming up. I get. I, I could testify about that. 
I could testify about it's getting hotter or it's a cool day. I can testify that I see my sons and my wives. I can testify to that. I don't know what it is. Told I y'all don't know what it is to not be able to behold those great things. I said, for the light is sweet, not just the light of waking up in the morning, but the light that you can understand and know a little bit about this creator and this creative source. And that throughout the night, while you were, you and I were asleep and we had no control, that he kept us through that. So when the sunlight comes up and we can say Bokwe Tov, which is good morning, or Bokwe Or, which is morning light, it's a wonderful and great thing. And so to everyone that's here, not just the young men, but the the more senior men, the more experienced men, we just have to be more appreciative to the creator that he's given us another opportunity to behold that great and wonderful light that comes up every morning. I know if I asked you, each and every one of you individually, would you want that? Or would you want $10 billion, you would want to see the morning light. Mr. Jobs lost his life and he had billions of dollars. Steve Jobs lost his life and he had a ton of money. And so the simple things that we want in life, the things that we struggle through, the things that, you know, we all go through. And listen, Torah Yah for another day. That's highly important. Verse 8 says, For if a man live many years, let him rejoice in them all. And remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. So we're in the book of Ecclesiastes, Kohelet, the 11th chapter and the 8th verse. Uh, we covered a lot so far, but I just wanted to welcome the brothers that came in at this time just to recognize them and just let them know where we are. But it says again in verse 8, For if a man live many years, I'm sure every one of us on this line has thought about living longer than you are at this point. I don't know if somebody has a number of how long they want to live, but I could share with you that however long y'all gives me, I'm most appreciative of it. I'm most appreciative and I will also say that I would love uh, that y'all would Bless me to not have to be incapacitated, a cripple, invalid, whatever we call it. Uh, at the, I would pray that Yah would just be with me and let me live as many years and be, of, as they said, Moshe, his eyes were not dim, his natural forces were not abated. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so we see people sometimes go to their elderly years and they just, they don't remember they don't remember or care for their loved ones. They, they actually think that their loved ones are, you know, someone that's trying to hurt them, harm them. I pray that Yah would be merciful to me, to mine, and to yours, that he would be merciful of us, that if a man live many years, let him rejoice in them all. I want to have my mind through all of my years. They say there are a thousand ways to die. Do you know there are millions, trillions of ways to die? But how many ways are there to, to, for us to live? And Yah's given us that recipe. Verse 8 again. For if a man live many years, let him rejoice in them all. And remember the days of darkness. I just want everyone, especially the, the younger men that are on this call, I don't want you to think that you're going to 
you know, when you say, I want my life to be this way, that way, it may not always be that way. You're going to be getting some lessons and those lessons are painful sometimes. Every day won't be a blessing. Some days will be pain. And what I want you to be clear on when I say it won't be blessings, every day won't be a happy day. Every day is a blessing where you can live and breathe and, and acknowledge what you're going through. But every day won't be a day where you're just going to be smiling, every happy-go-lucky, just depending on how you look at it. When you go through hardships in life, you know, some days are going to be painful. You think that a beating or a mock or a punishment stops when you become a certain age, but it goes from physical to spiritual because the experiences that you're going to go through in this life, they're going to be hard. But I can tell you, if you stay close to the creator, if you stick close to the creator, I think I mentioned last week that my parents succumbed to the drugs of the 80s and the 90s, which was crack cocaine. And it took my family out. But yet I have parents, aunts and uncles that are in their 70s going into their 80s. It just shows you the great blessings of the creator that just because you go down this road doesn't mean that has to be your end or your destruction. So although you're going to have some dark days, as it says here, just know and understand, stay the course, stay close to the creator, keep the clo creator close to you. You don't have to figure that out as a 25, 30 year old. If you start out now at 12, 13, 14, 15, 19, and you get endear the creator, you get close to the creator, Life's still going to be hard, but the creator will show you a way out of all of it. And it's more important to learn the lessons. We hear blessings and curses, but it's, when you really think about it, it's lessons and blessings. You're going to learn some very hard lessons. You're going to learn some very wonderful lessons, but be open to keeping the creator close. And no matter what happens, even if a person hurts you, Yah sent that person to do that so that you and I would have more trust in him. The creator says it in the book of the prophets and even in the prophecies, he said, don't trust in men. Don't trust in the arm of flesh because they're going to do some ugly, dirty stuff. But trust me. And that's what we have to learn is how to trust the creator and know that the creator blessed you to be here on this earth for a time. Just for a little time to accomplish what he wants. Verse nine says. Rejoice, O young man. In thy youth. Love being a young man. I tell this to my sons and I just want to share it again. That you only a young person for a certain amount of time. After that, you are adulting <laughs> for the rest of your life. So it's important to enjoy your life but do what you can to sit the, at the feet of an elder, an older person that can teach you early in life not to make poor decisions because if you make poor decisions as a young person, your life is going to be rough from a long time. So rejoice, O oh young man, in your youth. Enjoy your days being a young person enjoy living up under your parents and their roof and their rulings and their support and their upbringing and their teachings rejoice in that because after a certain age a certain stage in the hebrew community 
2025, you're going to be on your own for the rest of your life. Then it says, let thy heart cheer thee in the days of your youth. Man, find the things that's going to make you or help you be pleased with the road you going down. Don't make choices that's going to cause you to be unhappy with yourself and unhappy with your course. It says, and walk in the ways of thy heart, whether it be good or bad. <laughs> Walk in the way. If you want to be the guy that's a criminal, make a bad name for yourself early on in life, enjoy it. Because whatever's going to come is going to come. And it says, and in the sight of your own eyes, but know thou that for all these things that Elohim will bring thee into judgment. I don't have my mother and my father here telling me what to do. I'm going to go and do X, Y, and Z. I'm going to, okay. And, and you have that right. Just know that at the end of the day, every man is going to be judged by the rod and the stick, the yah, the judgment, the, the ruling, the judgment that is within the universe. So you could just say, I'm just having fun. Well, go, enjoy your fun, because guess what? When y'all look at it, he's going to make a determination. I also wanted to bring this same, very same perspective to the brothers on the call that we spend a lot of time judging another individual. We have law, statutes, and commandments, and we have to make decisions and movements on, you know, what we're going to accept and not accept. I'm going to tell you something. We are very judgmental. And we have to learn to let Yah do his job. We don't have to become Yah. We just have to stand for the righteous principles of Yah. But when it comes to the judgment, that will come from the creator. His universe has already been built that way. And for us to add on and you know, act like we're the creator against an individual, we have to be very careful because as they say, the one finger that you point to another, we say three, but it's actually four because your thumb is also pointing towards you as well. And so we just have to let Yah do his judgment and his will. We have to make decisions based on Yah's law to stand for this or stand for that. And we should always stand for Right. But I want to reiterate what Shalomo said. He says, but know thou that for all these things, whether you're a senior man or a young man, the decisions that you make, these things, Yah, will bring you into judgment. Your mother and your father can't change what Yah's going to do. So keep that in mind as you want to grow and elevate and become your own man. None of us on this line became our own man without seeking the wisdom of another man who's been here a little bit longer than we have. So to conclude, it says in verse 10, therefore remove vexation. Vexation is, is another word for anger from thy heart. And put away every, uh, put away evil from thy flesh. Be mindful of the decisions that you make, because the decisions that you make don't just concern you, they concern other people. For childhood and youth are vanity. Vanity meaning meaningless, because most of us look at our childhood, like I may be here for a very long time, but I can tell you something. 40 years ago, I was a child. I was just telling one of my wives, 40, almost 40 years ago, I graduated high school. That sounds insane. But it's life. So we have to be mindful of we're going to get older. We're going to go through things. And we want the help and the support of the creator 
based off of the decisions that we make. If we can go to chapter 12 and just the first verse, please. Reiterating to, to every single one of us. And when it says youth, I can still consider myself a youth. I'm only 53 years of age, a very young person in my mind. And so this is a word to myself and to others. It says, remember then thy creator in the days of thy youth. Get connected with the creator in your youth. You don't want to wait till you're in a bad situation or you're an older man. When, when looking for y'all, trying to find y'all, start as young as possible. That doesn't mean that, oh, I found him when I was a little older man, that there's something wrong with that. Absolutely not. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying as men who understand that we've been disconnected We've been pushed away. We pushed ourselves away. There are other people trying to keep us away from the creative source, Yah Yahuwah. So now we have to understand and know that we must remember the Creator in the days of our youth, before the evil days come. And that don't just necessarily mean that stuff is going to be happening on the planet. It's stuff that's going to be happening in your life in your own world. It says, before the evil days come, in the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. I'm living in a time where I'm witnessing real life criminals, not, you know, something that's in the movie, but we're living in a day and time that we seeing and we're witnessing real life criminals get, get away within what they call the judicial system with murder. That's why it's so important that number one, we teach our children, we teach ourselves how to stay aligned with the creator, that we would put it in our inward parts, we will walk with this every day because it's the righteous principles on living and on the planet earth that we will become a light to the whole planet but that how we keep that going is to maintain a level of wisdom that Yah will guide us and allow us to be the light that we're supposed to be hallelujah to Allah for your time and for your attention the floor is open for any comments, questions, or concerns. Hallelujah. Tell our boss, saw you, honey. Hallelujah. Go ahead. I can't hear y'all got in the comments. The, the floor is now open. So yourself, you got the flow. Shalom, shalom, Lalito, Ms. Pakti. Can I be heard pretty well? Can. Can, can. Uh, first and foremost, all praise to the Most High. Pray that heaven and earth sees and all that the man is. Kohane, you did it again. I, <laughs> yeah, you already know. Your, your words struck the heart for me. Um, I did chime in a little late. I do apologize. I was detaining a little bit with homework, but I would say that I was right on time. And the word that I received was was uh, something to me and my Isha was, which is interesting. It was something Isha was talking about um, about a couple of days ago in regards to that same thing, like finding finding enjoyment in, in, in the life that we got right now, like the moment we have right now. Uh, not taking too much things for granted because um, it may seem lively in this moment in time but most high can take away these things in the blink of an eye um so just being humble oh like just staying humble and teaching your children what that actually looks like um i think we talked about that can't remember the conversation i had it's many conversations um where we was talking about that um oh shanantam yeah that we had a conversation here and uh 
what that actually looks like rather than just talking about Torah. We can talk till we blue in the face to our children. I think every uh everyone that has children and tested this, we can talk till we blue in the face, but actually walking it out is going to be the best illustration that you have for demonstrating what this walk actually looks like, you know, and that's something me and Maisha stress. Uh, I do also want to take the time uh, of guests that were definitely invited. Uh, first and foremost, Zakin Yassar Rabah. Shalom, shalom to you. Baba Tob. And uh, Aki Ya'al. Peace and blessings to you, Aki. I see you on, I see you on the panel as well. Um, not to steal my act. Sorry, your hand was thunder. But if y'all had any words also that y'all wanted to speak upon the lesson, uh, please chime in because I'm going to land my plane right after this. Shalom, shalom. I just appreciate you inviting me on. Uh was uh doing something with some other ox that I was with. So I didn't get to catch a lot of the message or whatever, but I definitely look forward to getting on in the future and you know being able to chop it up with you guys. The flow is still open. I can. Y'all got any, any more uh, comment? Don't shout some more. You got the flow. Shalom. All praise to the Most High Yah. For all that He's done for me, all that He's done for us, and total about for the message. And the, the part that stood out to me was um, the part pretending to just try some things, you know. And, uh, and what I took from the chapter was, you know, waiting for the right time, always trying to wait for the right time to do things. But sometimes the work just needs to be brought forth. And I think about, you know, when farmers, they plant things in the ground and you can't always keep observing the sky and observing the rain and all these things. You know, there, there comes a time where you just have to plant things in the ground and you just wait to see if something will grow. If you spend all the time just observing, you know, the weather and trying to figure out when it's the best season, when it's the best time, you know, when it's the best area, you know, you're going to miss, you know, bringing forth some good fruit. So that stood out to me. All praise to the Most High. And I just want to say, you know, shalom, shalom to the brothers that tuned in, the newer brothers. May the Most High bless and keep you. And I yield. Shalom, shalom. Well, as uh, as has been stated, you know, it's really there's so much that we are still learning and growing into, and I'm appreciative to the Creator and the creative sources within your own spirit body um, that continues to teach me. I'm not just a teacher, but I'm also a student. And, and if we keep those things in mind that, you know, we're always evolving and always growing, you know, y'all always has something to show us. And so I'm very appreciative to, to hearing your voices and hearing your words. And again, I always look forward to hearing someone else and hearing the growth that we all have uh, concerning you know, our elevation with our creator. Hallelujah. Toda, Toda, Kohen, man. I appreciate you coming on, you know, this week and last week for the leading off the discussion. You know, um, it's something we all men need to hear. You know, to uh, to the two brothers that came on, y'all always welcome. We be having our Tuesday uh, men, this building as men, coming together as men, growing together as men, uh, Elohim. Um, if y'all have any more comments, um, I'm gonna ask Saul yourself if you don't mind closing out with Tefla.
fun. I'm here, I'm just shifting to another spot that's a little more quiet. Our hearts and minds clear. Allow us to depart from one another in peace and in shalom. As we indulge in this word, I'll be out of and brought forth to us. Allow this word, I'll be out of be planting a good seed to bring forth good fruit in the seed and hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to Rabbiah. Our King, our Maker, our Redeemer. You, Abiyah, creator of all things, even Kokhmah, wisdom, Abiyah. That you allow wisdom to keep crying out to us, Abiyah. Even we were undeserving of such mercy. That she still cries out to us, Abiyah. Even in our captivity, still showing us, still pointing us in the right direction. You are truly a merciful God. Forgiving of iniquity. Slow to anger Allow us, Abia, the men first, to emulate just a fraction of that esteem. To teach forth, Abia, our families. To cultivate righteous bonds, Abia. Bonds that are forged only, only in your sight that you seem, that you deem fit for manifestation. For only you, Abiyah, allow the increase thereof. We thank you, Abiyah, for each and every soul that is here under the sound of my voice. Even the souls that weren't even to, able to make it, but had a heart's desire to do so. Even the souls, Abiyah, that are calling upon your name, even the verse, this very moment, calling upon your name. I pray, Abba, Yah, that you protect each and every household, that you increase each and every household, that you plant your hands of protection around about, Abba, Yah. For you are a strong tower. You are a strong refuge for us. As we depart, Abba, Yah, keep peace between we and thee. Protect us in our sleep, Abia. Protect our minds as we depart. Allow, allow love to continuously grow within us. Allow it to connect us, Abia. The young, the old. Let us not forget your name. Shlak Ninu, Abia, forgive us. For our transgressions, even the transgressions of our forefathers, Abba. We continuously bow our faces to you. In supplication to you. So that very day, that great day, we cry out that you may even leave a blessing behind for us, Abba. Told our Rabbi, yeah. All the honor, all the glory, and all the esteem, Abiyah, be belongs to you. Since now and forevermore, we love you and honor you with all of our heart, soul, and mind. We lift up your name above all names, Yahuwah Zebaot. And we say, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, and Hallelujah. Amen, wa Amen. Hallelujah, Amen, Amen. All right, King. Told her, yeah, for you all coming on. Told her to you again, Kohan. 
And I'll say hava shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom, brother. Okay, shalom, shalom. Toda Rabbah. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom.